Get out of the rod, you splurge! <laughs> Toothless, slab-sided, lantern-shot old cretin, make way for the U.S. mail. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Here's your mail, Henry. It's a copy of the country gentleman. Henry, did you have any frost up to your place this morning? Frost, you say? Well, now I'll tell you. This morning, when I got up, five o'clock, always do get up five o'clock, Pa and Ma always brought us boys up to get up in the morning, and I never knew about lay a bed in the Perkins family in all my life. Well, as I say, I got up this morning, five o'clock, as usual, I pulled on my britches and jumped into my boots, and I started down over the stairs. Well, now them stairs are mine. Nice, easy, comfortable stairs with a 12-inch tread and only about six-inch riser. I ain't no, had no fuss with them tall, steep, narrow stairs like a ladder where you break your damn neck trying to go down. Them stairs of mine are nice and easy and comfortable. And <clears throat> them treads is all solid oak. I, uh, don't wear no of them, none of them ruts in the middle of them stairs. And alongside of them stairs of mine, I got me a banister of nice red cherry. I tell you, there's nothing like a cherry banister. And down to the foot of the stairs, I got me a newer post, a curly ash. And I tell you, you take the combination of red cherry and curly ash, especially in the morning by lamplight, when you go down there, they're mighty pretty. I tell you, well, as I say, I went down over the stairs, and then I went over into my living room, into my sitting room, and over there I had have me a, one of them round pot-bellied t- airtight stoves. If at night when you go to bed, you stick in a couple of sticks of rock paper. In the morning when you come down, right, guy, you got a nice bed of coals. All you have to do is stick in a couple more, and you got a roaring in no time. You know, <clears throat> there in the corner of that sitting room of mine, I got me a a walnut sofa, and it's uh, upholstered in red plush, mighty pretty, I tell you. And then standing at the head of that sofa, I got me a, one of them standing lamps with a circle of burner and a nice globe about a uh, kind of a creep color. I tell you, it's mighty nice when you come in after your chores are done at night, you stretch out on that sofa, and God, it's mighty well. You take on Thursday, for instance, when the clarion comes out. I don't think nothing. Sometimes I lay in there reading the clarion till, well, most 9.30 sometimes before I go to bed. Well, then I went out through my setting room. I went into the dining room. That dining room of mine, I got it wainscoted all around in butternut wood. I tell you, I always say a dining room ain't a dining room if you don't have a wainscoting in it. And if you're going to have a wainscoting, there ain't nothing like butternut wood, in my opinion. I tell you, you sit down there, and just, it just gives you an appetite to look at it, by gosh. Well, then, then I went out into the kitchen and got to get the fire started for Ma when she come down. And we don't, now down that cook stove's mine, we don't never burn nothing but maple and birch. There ain't nothing for cooking like maple and birch. And, and <clears throat> I got, besides what I got there in the shed, oh, I must have two or three cords all cut and stacked, besides what I got up there in the wood lot of seasoning. Well, as, then uh, as I went out through the shed, uh, I went over to the privy. I always says that a fellow ain't regular in his habits. He ain't no good know how. And that privy of mine, I will say, is a mighty comfortable privy. We got a seat board there, a uh, boxwood. Hey, guy, there's something kind of velvety about boxwood. It mighty comfortable, I tell you. And then there's another thing about a privy. You always want to have your privy kind of quarter into the wind. Now with us. The prevailing wind with us comes from the southwest, and that privy of mine, I got it facing just a little east or south. And it makes a mighty sight of difference of the wind that, in the draft that comes up through the halls if you have it setting right. Well, then after I left the privy, I went out into the barn to get my dog Spot. 
That dog Spot of mine, I got him from the Mitchell boys up there on the back road. They've been raising cow dogs as long as they can remember. And as far as I know, they ain't never raised a poor cow dog in all, they've, all these years. And I always says that my dog Spot's the best cow dog they ever raised. You send him out, I don't care how far out they be or how they're separated. You round them up and bring them in every time. And well, Spot and me, we started out, we went out to the runway. That runway of mine, I got anchor fencing and cedar posts all the way around the pasture. And I tell you, there's nothing like it. There's some of these fellas, you know, they'll stick in chestnut or purple. Why, God, it won't last while you're putting it in the ground. But with cedar, you got a fence, and you got a fence that's going to last. Well, as I say, Spot and me went out, and just as we got out to the gate, I happened to look down, and there on the grass, I see just a little light of frost. Oh, Henry, I'm just getting around to delivering yesterday's mail today. And now it's time to do my chores. Today's mail won't be delivered till tomorrow. So I best I get to get going. <laughs> so.